Welcome back, folks. In the last part of this series, we built an Android interface with nice little feedback on our text fields if we typed data that was incorrect. If you had an error, you got this message down here. It was descriptive. And if you still had an error when you left the text field, you got the extra bump of a red border around the entire field. And so today we want to do the same thing for iOS. So make sure you have an iOS emulator or device running for this video. So let's start in our widgets text field class, which contains the logic for displaying the text field in either Cupertino or Material right here. Uh, we have a decoration for Material, which if we go to Styles Text Field is an input decoration that contains an error text. All we have to do is give it the text and it displays in Material. We have a box decoration for Cupertino text field, so we have no such error decoration to pass. So we're going to have to build something uh, ourselves for the Cupertino display of the error message. So let's go back to widgets text field. And just looking at what we built in Android, uh, it sure seems like we could just build a column and put a text field down below uh, our text and that could serve as an error message. So let's do that. So I'm going to wrap, uh, I want the padding around the whole thing, so let's wrap the Cupertino text field with a column. And after our text field, uh, let's do a row. Let's give it some children, and the children can be a text widget that displays the error text. And so we save that, and we get an error because error text currently is null. So let's fix that with an expression that checks to make sure the error text is not null. So if the error text is not null, Then we'll display null. No, it's not null. We'll display our row, and if it is, we'll just pass a blank container. All right. So that fixes that. Uh, we can type a little bit here, but nothing's happening because we haven't hooked up the on change function. Uh, so nothing is telling the stream that there are changes and it should be rebuilt. So let's add our onChange function to our text field. And so now the stream should be reading. So if we get john at doe.com, doe's.com, I guess that's fine. All right, so there's our error message. Doesn't look a thing like our Android message, but that's all right. We can style that. So let's go to styles and let's go to text. And let's create a style for errors. So I'll start, I'm just going to copy suggestion and paste it down below and just replace suggestion with error. And so for the color there, I want red. And the size, I want the size to be smaller. So let's try 10. I'll code format that. And then if we go back to widgets, text field, and in our text where we have our error text, we want to put a comma, we want to put style, and we want text styles dot error. Like that. Okay, that's that's a little small. So I'm going to go back to uh, style text and let's do 12. I'm going to pull this aside there. Yeah, 12 looks pretty good. All right, so it's it's not it needs to come down and over to the right a little bit. So let's go to widget text field and let's wrap this row with some padding. And 
and it will be edged sets only. So let's do a top of like five and a left of 10. And I'll drag this over there and see how that looks. Looks pretty good. Um, you know, while we're here and I'm thinking of it, this is just the default um, text style for an error in Android. It looks pretty darn close to what we've set up. But before we forget, let's go to Styles, Text Fields. And in our input decoration for material, we have below error text, let's put error style. And let's just give it uh, text styles error. And next time we run Android, we'll have the exact same style as iOS, which we probably won't even notice because they're so close. All right, so that's half the battle. We have our error text down here. We'll probably get the same thing if we type down here in password. Uh, the next thing we need to do, though, is if we leave the text field, we want to make sure that this lights up red. And if we come back to it and we're on a focus, we want to make sure it goes back to the straw. And so if we go to styles and we go to text field, we can see that we've got this really rich featured text field for material. Uh, it's taking care of figuring out whether the, uh, the text field is focused or there's a focused error or there's an error on it. Uh, and all we have to do is define the styles. Up here we have a box decoration which has few options and none of them are really of any help to us as far as like defining the the status so let's do this let's create a second cupertino decoration so we'll copy we'll paste and we'll call it cupertino error decoration and we'll change the color from straw to red and then i'll format it so if we can determine whether our field is an error status, we can just change the style and that will change it for us. All right, so coming back to widgets text field, we need to basically reproduce what's going on in material where it knows when it's focused and when the focus has been left. And we can do that with a focus node in Flutter and the documentation is out there on the uh, flutter.dev but focus node needs to be initiated and then it needs to be disposed of so we actually want to change our widget to a stateful widget so that we can manage the initiation and disposal of the node so I'm coming up here to, to app text field and I am converting it to a stateful widget. And so to bring in the node, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to declare a focus node, which I'll call underscore node. So it's a private variable and I'll create an init state. And then I'll also just create a dispose. And to initiate my node, I'm just going to create a new focus node like that. And then to dispose it, I'm just going to call node.dispose. All right, so that's all taken care of. What I want to do is actually add a listener to my node so I can then listen to the status that's changed to find out if the node has been left or it's been entered upon. And so I want to add a listener. And I don't have a function yet for listening, so let's create one. I'm going to create a void called handle focus change. And so if I do that and then I call it over here, And then I attach that node to my Cupertino text field right here. 
Uh, whoop, should have said focus node. There's a property for that. And I'm going to restart the state because I've changed this from a stateful to a or stateless to a stateful widget. And when the state is initiated, we create a new focus node. We attach a listener, and now any time the the node changes or the status of the focus changes, uh, we're going to call this function. So I can put print statement in here. I'll we'll just call it focus changed. And then I can see down here in my debug console that I actually get two because not only am I leaving this text field, I'm coming into this one. So every time I move, I get two because they're both responding, one to being focused and one to being taken out of focus. So let's think about what we want to do in here. First of all, we want to know was the focus left? Because that's what we're looking for. We want to light this up to red if they are leaving and there's an error. So I, I really just answered my own question there, right? We want to know is the focus left? And we also want to know if there's an error. And to track both of those, I'm going to create a variable up here, which is a Boolean. And I'm just going to call it display Cooper Tino error border. And I'm going to set that initially to false, of course. And then for a method, I'm going to check if node has focus equals false. And also, the error text is not equal to null. And so I'm now a stateful widget, so I need to use widget dot error text does not equal null. So in that case, I want the display Cupertino error border equal to true. But otherwise, we'll set it to false and we can display the normal straw color. So then we can come down here and in our decoration, We can say display Cupertino error border. Uh, in that case, we will do text field styles. Cupertino error decoration, and otherwise we'll just do the standard decoration. And I need to restart my state because that variable didn't exist. So now if we type something that's wrong in here, we get our error, we leave, and nothing happens. But you'll notice that if we make kind of a superficial change in our code and hit save, it works. So what's going on here is, is that nothing has told Flutter that it needs to rebuild the widget tree until I trigger a change there with a hot reload. So if we look back at our login screen, we've got this stream builder, and if the stream changes, it's going to rebuild the text field, but nothing in the stream has changed. Really nothing has told Flutter, something's happened, you need to rebuild this text field. So we need a strategy for kicking off that process to rebuild the text field when we leave it. And one way we can go about that is by, if we go back to widgets text field, if we recall in our, if we go to our handle change here, we have access to widget dot on change method. And that will interact directly with our, our stream. So we could change the value in the back end of the stream. That's going to cause a rebuild. And so if I restarted here, and now I type wrong, and I leave, we now get the correct border. If we come back on it, then it goes back to strong. Good, except that we don't want to be passing a blank value back to our back end. We actually want to pass what's in here. This says wrong, 
but now we've just told our stream that the value of our text field is actually blank. So we don't want to do that. We want to pass what's actually in the text field back there uh, if that's the way we're going to manipulate the stream into rebuilding the text. And so we can do that with a text editing controller. And that also requires a stateful widget, but fortunately we already have one. So we'll create that. We'll call it controller. Uh, in our init state, we will create a new text editing controller. And we will dispose it. That requires disposal, just like the node does. And we also want to remove the uh, listener from the node. I forgot to do that here. So let's do remove listener. And we'll do handle focus change there. There. And we want to do it before dispose. So when this is disposed, we're going to destroy the controller. We're going to remove this function from the listener of the node. And then we're going to destroy the node entirely. All right, that controller is not yet attached to our text field. So if we come down to Cupertino text field, we come below, there is a property for a controller and we will attach that controller. So then lastly, coming up here to our handle focus changed, instead of just faking the stream rebuild with blank text, we can actually pass back what's in the text field with controller dot text. And I'm just going to restart the state. And we'll do wrong at example dot com. It's happy. Uh, if I leave the password field, we get the red. If I come back, we get the gold and if I get over eight characters, it's happy. So let's just drag that uh, Cupertino back over here, see how we did. So we wanted uh, SD and like that. And we did pretty good. Those look very similar. All right, let's wrap that one up. Next time we'll come back and we will work on the button. This is not a button, it's just a button looking type thing. We'll add a little bit of motion to it uh, and we'll also disable it if either one of these fields is invalid. That'll be next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.